From this presentation, what I have demonstrated, we have tried to demonstrate from the few examples that we have seen that mathematical statements that are true today could turn out to be false tomorrow. There, people, mathematics is no different from any other branches of knowledge where people are prone to make mistakes, either deliberate or unintentional. They can make mistakes which can only be discovered by later generations, and some of them may not be, have been discovered yet. yet. Euclid's postulate took 2,500 years to understand. So if this is the case of from these few statements that we have taken up, how is it that we want to construct reality? The answer our questions about where we came from, what's our purpose, and where we are going, based on statements that can keep flip-flopping. Can you take, can you now, are you confident now that you have a few set of exams? That doesn't mean that you are able to, you know, uh, pass it on to other people because these are very, some of them are very technical stuff. And that's the sad part. That is the sad part. Just because it is technical doesn't mean that we cannot understand this and pass it on to people and say that mathematics is not certain, it is full of holes. It's our job now to understand these things in a way to communicate to somebody whose belief has been polluted, whose belief in Allah and His Messenger has been polluted by the belief in the supremacy of mathematics. This is the sad part. We give up these things. Why? Because we give it up because it's too technical. We don't give our, our effort. We don't listen to people. This is, none of this statement is coming from a Muslim. These statements have been written down since, you know, we are discussing it earlier, you know, 18th century. These holes have been discovered. Why is it that Muslims, we are not, we, we, the address here is not to non-Muslims. The address is to Muslims. Why do Muslims think that a mathematics as a foundation of science can lead you to reality, can answer the Big Bang. If these are the conditions under which you are constructing your theorems and your proofs, are you serious? This is, matter, this is a very serious matter. Do you want to put your life, your existence at stake on these statements which turn out to be false? The duty now is to communicate these things in simple language to people, especially people who, have, who, who are not misguided, who are, they have been overcome by the fumes of rationality, science, mathematics. This is the challenge, and this is why we are here. This is the reason why I brought this, you know, this collection together. I can challenge you today. People who have studied with me mathematics do not know this. And when I, ch I give them these things, when I show them these things, the first reaction is, you got to be kidding. Hmm. They don't want to believe you. They, I have nothing to, I am not asking you to believe me. Hmm. Go read it yourself. It's there. Uh, this, is, this is just Googling. This is not even going into any in-depth academic research. Go, you, Google yourself. Why is it that we, don't, we fail to realize this? Why is it that when we are hit with this kind of statements, why is it that we, we, we say, no, this can't be true? Why? Because, be of because of the conviction. Because Iman is lacking. The road to reality is through La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And I will say it one more time. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That is where you will... That is where, if you don't accept that, no problem. That's a free choice. But don't, there's no other way you can understand. You know, you know people have criti criticized hadith and you know, Islamic literature based on these rational methods, these logical methods, which you see, which, which I've, these are just 45 examples, eh? 45 examples? You know how many there are? How, you know how many books are on, on these things? Why is it that we don't know about them? Why? 
Why? Because we, we, we are so mesmerized by that's, these things. That's the concept of Deen comes in. The Deen who is in control only popularizes those things through their mediums which they want to be popular. But that's, 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 that's how they're controlling things. That, that's, that, that's, that's the prerogative. That's the prerogative. Yes. If I, I will only say good things about Brother Muzammil. Why? Because he's my friend. Why will I say anything negative about him? So that's a serious problem. That when these things become in control, the people of knowledge in, in Islam, they keep on sleeping. For example, when the financial system grew to an extent that now it controls the globe, guess what scholars were doing, Islamic scholars? Sleep. Exactly. Similarly, media now controls. When it grew and controlled the globe, what they did? They just criticize, oh, this is haram, this is haram. That's it. We don't have a deen. We don't have it. Similarly, education system. This education system, which is teaching mathematics and other stuff, and which teaches that this is this is the this is the truth. This is the truth. Everything is based on truth. It's research, it's science, and it's ultimate. Those who are the channels which they're using to teach this, to popularize it, it has become global. We never countered it. We are still not because we believe we don't care about these things. This is a problem. Or belief. So I believe I'm not bothered about other people mm -hmm. believing or not. Or I'm telling you, oh, believe in Allah, Allah is one, blah, blah, blah. So who's going to counter these things? So who's going to tell the speech? I, to the speech? I want to just wrap this up re really fast. So here is another equation in mathematics. And this, ma this equation has been considered to be the most beautiful equation in mathematics because it unites. All the constants, the basic constants of mathematics, 1, 0, e, i, and pi, with the addition and equality sign. And look at what he's, he's saying, uh, this professor. He says, is absolutely paradoxical. We cannot understand it, and we don't know what it means. But we have proved it, and therefore we know it must be truth. It must be truth. So be the truth. Be the truth. They, they don't understand it, and they have proven it. So, that's, let's not go into the details of what that statement means, but look at, look at this is only comes f from a person who believes in that framework, right? Yeah. I don't understand Wahi. I don't, I've never seen Jibril Amin, but I believe it. Yeah. I, I believe it. And they object to you on that. They object to you on that. But we don't object uh, them on this thing. <laughs> exactly. That's the whole point. Oh, he's right. You know, yeah, he could be. No, no, it's mathematics. It's mathematics. Mathematics. Yes. In, in his own statement, he's contradicting himself. Yeah. Yeah. He's That's saying, what you say. That's what you and me yeah, say. And, and, and we are saying. Well, other people say, oh, no, no, he's a big fan. So star, this is considered to. So, right. so yeah. here, he's considered to be the greatest equation ever. So this is considered some, uh, the whole branch of something called mathematical beauty. You know, beauty in mathematics, I, you know, that's outside the scope of what we are discussing today. But I just wanted to bring it to your attention here that, that look, at, look, at, look at how you justify beliefs, your neuroscience. A study of the brains of 16 mathematicians found that the emotional brain, specifically the medi medial orbitofrontal cortex, which lights up for beautiful music, poetry, and pictures, etc., lit up more consistently for Euler's identity than for any other formula. So, so you are saying, you are basically saying something you, that is so abstract that you don't understand, but then you are trying to prove that it is, it is so good by doing a neuroscience experiment on me. It's cyclical. Neuroscience is based on mathematics. You are trying to prove mathematics based on mathematics. Yeah. It's circular. It, it goes to infinite loop. Okay. So, uh, look at, I was given, you know, this statement, this particular equation has caused a lot of, you know, discussion on, you know, uh, when we are growing up. It's unimaginable. Unimaginable. And, you know, uh, look at what, what Professor uh, Harsh says. What is mathematics really? How is it possible that mistakes occur in mathematics? 
Okay, I can't go through the whole quote here, but I'm just highlighting the points here. He, he is himself amazed. If mathematics is, needs to be, you know, the road to reality, how can it make mistakes? Have you, you know, like, you know, uh, we have discussed before, science scientists, there are three scientists that you should really think about. Cantor in mathematics, Boltzmann in um, uh, physics, and Cantor in mathematics, Boltzmann in physics, and Godel in logic. These three people are considered to be the epitome scientists. Boltzmann, you know, is the basis of modern statistical thermodynamics, Boltzmann's constant, right? Godel, you know, logic, Cantor set three, one which we are discussing today, three of them committed suicide. All three? All three. Have you ever seen, have you ever heard a prophet of God committing suicide? His belief in his God. So, um, I don't know if it's a proper question. Is there any reason why they didn't commit suicide? Yeah, they were basically, they got mad with what they were studying. Cantor okay. was studying but set theory. Cantor right, you know. was studying inf inf infinity, you know, this concept of infinity in mathematics. Right. He got different levels of infinity, and then he said the absolute infinity is God, and then he went mad. And then it's very very sad situation with Cantor. Boltzmann, the same thing. You know, Boltzmann, you know, he, he's studying. He, and moreover, when this kind of research was brought out at that time, the, by these people, most mainstream mathematics and you know their subject, they rejected it because it you know like because of intersection of philosophy, theology, ideology, mathematics. You know you get a reaction. We have not even done this. Is just proof. We have not done the sociology of mathematics. How are proofs accepted? We we, we have not even touched that point yet. Yeah, I, no, I have a question. That's a good study. So, if the peop people of this yes. caliber of knowledge has come to a point that they kill themselves. Now you compare the complexities of these th issues and uh, how do you get the blessing of this belief set which Allah Even has जैसे प्रॉफिट्स का या कोई नेक लोगों का जिक्र आता है तो हम हमारी टेंशन फौरन ही इधर आ जाती है ठीक है हमारा माइंडसेट है फ्रेमवर्क है हमारा फ्रेम ऑफ रेफरेंस सो लेट मी लेट मी फिन आई विल आंसर दिस क्वेश्चन आई विल आंसर आई विल आंसर दिस क्वेश्चंस सो लिसन टू दिस वन क्वांटम इलेक्ट्रो इलेक्ट्रोडायनेमिक्स लुक एट दिस वन फाइनमैन हु इज कंसीडर्ड टू बी वन ऑफ द पायनियर्स ऑफ इलेक्ट्रोडायनेमिक्स he proved some theorems which were later on he realized were were wrong and he had to he had to double check it who was checking it so when does a proof become a proof and this is where i will stop here i don't think i will go on from here no so when does a proof become a proof we are not going to the sociology of mathematics right now a proof becomes a proof only after the social act of accepting it as a proof now it has nothing to do with math ma mathematics now mm. I, I think it has been demonstrated. The, because if five people say it is correct, because, you know, Euler is saying it, or Godel is saying, or Einstein is saying it, then we accept it, finish. Should be correct. Because that, that's it. People of knowledge. So that's the social... Yeah, people that, of knowledge. That, yeah. that, 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 that's the... More than us. Exactly. That, that's the that's social... Like, social aspect of it. Yeah. That's the social acceptance, right? They have, you know, put their lives into it, mm. you know, these... Right? So I will end with a few quotes here, but uh, not uh, like all, everything here. I will end with, you know, these quotes we already gone through last time. I'll say, look at what no von Neumann says. And von Neumann is the basis of modern uh, computer, von Neumann architecture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Von Neumann architecture, okay? The main hope of justification of classical mathematics being gone. Are you listening, Brother Fawad? Mm -hmm. The main hope of a justification of classical mathematics being gone. You understand that? No hope. We can't justify mathematics based on classical ma uh, mathematics. Most mathematicians decide to use that system anyway. 
this history constitutes the best ca caution against taking the immovable rigor of mathematics too much for granted. Do you understand? So, he is saying basically this is what he is saying. He is saying classical mathematics cannot give you any foundation and if you accept it, it is just on belief. Oh, take it for granted. Take it for granted. Hmm. So, what he says, the purpose of computation is insight, not numbers. Again, we come back to the same thing. Mathematics is not just not, you are not counting sheep and cows and donkeys. Yeah. There's, there's more to this. That's what we don't get. Yeah, it has implications on all walks of life. Niels Bohr, you know, we all agree that your theory is crazy, but is it crazy enough? Th that's why people... See what he says, Weistras, a mathematician who is not also something of a poet will never be a complete mathematician. Question. Mm. Every person has a mathematician inside it, but they hate mathematics. Why? That's... Uh, we'll come to that. Okay. So, the best... the, the best quotation... Their best. <laughs> so I'll, I'll, I'll come to this thing. I will address that thing here. A, this is attributed to Darwin, but it is, is not Darwin's quote. So I just want everybody to understand this first. A mathematician is a blind man in a dark room looking for a black cat which isn't there. <laughs> Say it again. Yeah, Charles Darwin ka nahi hai. He is copying from other people. Okay. So it, the original source is somebody else, and it's not only one person who has said it. There's a you know series of people who have made this statement before him, before him and after him. Okay. Actually, the statement was actually made like this: a metaphysician metaphys metaphys is a blind man in a dark room looking for a black cat for a black hat which isn't there. This was the original statement. Black hat. Okay. Yeah. So, but which isn't there. So, later on it got, you know, like through, you changed. know, changed till it came to dark. We're going to challenge a theory of relativity here. Speed of light here. Take it. Origin of universe here. It didn't calculation give basis. Oh, calculation. Yes. Or what's the theorem? Yes. 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 E is equal to mc squared is based on prince on different theorems. How many theorems do you want to enumerate? So this is a, one of the challenges that I got. Okay. Let me tell you my experience. I asked the same question. I asked this question from beginning is tell me what's the point when you prove this thing show me its practical application everybody used to tell me when you study mathematics it will lead it leads to some fruitful end result it has to right mm -hmm. okay this is my, this is why my first interaction with mathematics not fruitful not some practical some out some out practical output okay let's say practical output let's change the word. Application of the A practical output. I asked this question when I was 12 years old. What is the first question an answer I got back? Shut up. I got back, you are too young to understand this thing. Yeah, exactly. That's Keep studying. <laughs> okay. So I grew up, I asked the same question. The question will not go away. So, oh, there's lots and lots of application. Don't you see we've reached the moon through this? Wow. Imagine a 14 year old boy told being told this. I said, wow, mathematics made us reach the moon. I'm going to study mathematics. And mathematics will, you know, read other stuff. Mathematics will also be able to, I will prove the Quran right through mathematics. And this is my statement. I'm not making this up. And I will prove the existence of God also. Through mathematics. If this is, okay. So now the child develops. The question goes on. Now he's asking the question again. What? So now we start reading books. And we are being told, you know, we reach the moon, uh, the coffee maker is a result of mathematical endeavor. Right? 
those mathematics ok. So, I, I my first class in abstract algebra group 3 abstract algebra is really abstract all this is abstract algebra. I asked the same question and the teacher said now I am getting two answers now. No, you think everything is practical? There is something else, you know, mathematics for mathematics sake. So, what is that? What is that? The person is not confused, 16 years old, 17 years old, you are confused now. So, what is happening? Mathematics for mathematics sake, what is, does that mean? Then you read more books and you say mathematics for to find answer to ultimate reality. So, now you have two answers now. You have one that gives you output, practical application, and one is ultimate reality. So you now you are going towards that. So I asked the question. So abstract algebra was another example. I was given a book, the application of abstract algebra in pharmacology, and in, ph in the pharmacy, in building of drugs, medication. Well, I read the book. I was very impressed. Oh, yes, we have practical applications of groups and monoids and set theory and all these things. Then I read more. This is what I found out. If you take, say, 100 statements of mathematics, I'm just using a qualifier here, you will only be able to see probably like 2% of it having any output. Having any output? Having any output. Any, any, any application? Any application. Which is fruitful? Not well, fruitful, any, any application. Okay. I don't know about fruit. Only 2 percent? Only 2 percent. So, the, the uh, remaining 98... Somewhere which is not of gain? 98 percent of it is totally, is, is totally abstract. It is totally abstract and it is used to what Brother Fawad is pointing, the output is then go, geared towards other things. Other things. If you quantify, if you try, uh, perhaps two, per, 2 is like a very, you know, harsh figure from my point of view, you, uh, other mathematicians will come. It is very difficult, Brother Fawad, to say this theorem X, okay, and have a contiguous chain of thought processes or applications and arrive and say, oh, you know what? This is the Apple iPhone because of that theorem. But it could you be multiple. I, I'm not, I'm saying yeah. uh, theorems, you, it's, it's, you, it's almost impossible. Oh, you only get probably two or three concrete examples in the history of mathematics. Out of 100 percent. Out of 100, two or three. And those two of the, out of three and out of 100 are blown out of proportion and hammer down everybody, see, this is what mathematics is all about. I know where he's getting. <laughs> okay. The example like of what? Of this two out of hundred. Uh, it's not that. His point is not that. I think, can I come sure. to the point he's trying to get, correct me if I'm wrong. What he's saying that the human knowledge has grown such a large number and it's been pushed down your throat and the result is only 2%. Why? Because you don't have the continuity of things. You don't have the... But same people when they question the religion, they have the upper hand than you. But we Muslims, especially Muslims, your address is Muslims, right? Yeah, uh, non-Muslims are not in this equation at all. Okay, so this address is only Muslims. So these Muslims, they are with 2% of the result, they are overwhelmed by the knowledge and they are ready to accept whatever say whereas in the deen we have continuity of knowledge we have continuity of everything with a proof with the application 100 percent but still they are he, ma he makes a very ex you know uh, excellent point you have a continuity of thought you can say this hadith came from this point to this point to this point to this point and it has reached me right you cannot I can challenge any, any historians of mathematics or science to tell me either one theorem or two theorems or a group of theorems or even a, a field itself to say, you know, this field has contributed to this much. Yeah. Uh, they are, they are, of course they are. they are, but the examples are very few. And in fact, I never realized this till I read the, um, a paper uh, from a professor 
in uh, Sydney University. He, you know, I pointed out that paper last day. You see, the paper was written saying the uh, effectiveness of the unnatural effectiveness of mathematics on natural sciences. Mm. This was a 1955 paper by Edward Wigner. It has become the most famous paper among you know popular writing. Repeat it again. The unnatural effectiveness of mathematics in natural sciences. So the, another professor has written the unnatural ineffectiveness of mathematics in natural sciences. In fact, another professor has written more on this topic. Like, for example, one, one place where mathematics is always thought of as the uh, most effective tool is economics. Mm. Today, economics, you cannot become a graduate in economics without understanding calculus 3 and above. I, I'm telling you that. I, don't take my word for it. Go, go read the curriculum. And mathematical, in fact, a person has to have advanced. It's calculus or probability. Your calculus and probability, they, oh, they, they go up. When they yeah. go up, they become, you know, merged. It's impossible. But how much of that is effective in economic theory? Go ask, read any book on economic theory. Go read. There will, you know, tons of books. Like he's saying, we only hear one side of the story. Like you just said, the dean is going to you know, broadcast only what is favorable to you, right? The unfavorable is not. Most of economic theories is junk. I don't say it is Nobel Prize winners in economics are saying that. Yeah. It has no relevant. It has absolutely no relevance in human history. Yeah, all economists today in this part of the world also saying what the way the economic is presented this is not right, but nobody is listening to them. I know. I, here I'm talking about the you know the philosophy, the school of uh, look at this. What this is a PhD guy in string theory. Okay. Look at what he's saying. Your theory. Yeah, because, uh, we have to finish it. Next week, continue. Yeah, okay. Well, I, 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 so, but I, I think uh, inka point or apke point, mein I see the dichotomy. Dichotomy. What you are trying to understand is the mathematics. But his point, he is not trying to explain you mathematics. He is just giving you references. I that sure. is correct. I can teach him. I can teach mathematics. Yeah, but he is trying to understand what you are trying to. That's say. fine. We can do that. But that would be a different. You know, yeah. this is not the scope of this discussion. Yeah. Yes, we can do that. So, I, the, the, the the scope of discussion. Let's go back and understand. The thing is, we are challenging the beliefs. That is the scope in, science. in mathematics yeah, at in this science. at this point in science. Yeah, but but at what level? The question will be at what level? Beliefs in science. What kind of beliefs that people believe this is to be true? See? Fact. Okay, I will stop there. Now, we, uh, now to question to him. Proof to who? Muslims. First or non-Muslims? Muslims first. Muslim, Muslim first. Muslim no, Muslims alike. first. No, no, no. Muslims first. They, they are the, they are the torch bearers, but they are not doing their part. So they have to be brought first. No, it's my first, second. Okay, first, second. Let's leave. Let's go. Let's go. Because you believe in faith, you say that Allah is one. In that, you are first, second. Okay, let's go. Let's talk a little bit further. Let's go. It's a matter of belief. Let's go. Okay, let's go. What is belief? Let's okay. go further down to understand. Mm -hmm. Belief is when two things comes in front of you, you give, you believe in one thing and you leave other. A conscious selection of of the ideas which are presented. To Achha, you. If you, when you select an idea on the on the grounds of belief, you choose the one which you value more. You choose the one which you value more. You believed that, okay, prophet is telling you the truth or scientist is telling you the truth. There are some grounds on which you choose one over another. That is correct. Those grounds 
gives you value. You see value. In That's correct. You choose because of your world view. Exactly. Yeah. Worldview is a very big term. It is big term. Yeah, but that is you, it. you built it up over okay. the age. Eight seconds. I'll come down. I'll, 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 because we have you, to. Band band huh? let's, band let's, band. let's come down to this. Band this band. Band. Poem is written by Ibn Qayyum about the fact that when we will be gathered in Jannah, that will, um, I mean, Jannah is the ultimate place that we want to be. But he's talking about the fact that even in Jannah, there will be a greater reward than just going to Jannah. And that will be the day when we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the reality. So reality can be known by in two ways. One, through the fact that we accept and we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is one way we will ex we accept the reality of things. The other way, current way of looking at rea uh, reality and trying to find out what our objectives are and what is the purpose of our life is through science and rationalism and one of the found and the bringing science with rationalism science is based on rational thoughts so you shouldn't just say rationalism science and rationalism is a little bit different but science involves rationalism is considered without empirical evidence. You can just think through the processes. But science is also empirical. So, yeah, there. If you go down in empirical, again, rational. Definitely. So, on top of it is. So, you mean there are two ways to reach reality. One is rational. Yes. Other one is spiritual. That is correct. That, no, not spiritual. Mm -hmm. Through Rasulullah. This because not. The spiritual is. Like six other uh, Buddhists. Yeah, they, they, Hindus, they but they him. do not. They, they they're, they're having some spiritual experience. They have. So what is the difference between like if Islam? Say, there's a speech problem. So so of, uh, uh, Hamza uh, Zorzis and that sick guy. I forgot his name. And he said, "What is the proof that Guru was right?" He said, "My spiritual experiences." Exactly. So the, the so he said that we can't deny your spiritual experiences, but if I would be at his place, I would have said, you know, how can you differentiate between your experiences and delusions? So the, that's that's the basic difference between the message of Islam and the message of other deen, especially the Eastern deens, you know, like Hinduism, Sikhism, uh, you know, Buddhism, other is <coughs> why he is not a spiritual experience. So question comes, the same question, how one is rational, I understand and believe, okay, if you prove me, if you make, give so, me some logic, reasoning to believe, okay, that is possible. What is the other way, the other, other source? The, the, spiritual experience is not a source? It can be a source, but it, was, it will not be free from contradictions because each and every experience is different, even, uh, even yourself. If one has to go through spiritual experiences, spiritual experiences are uh, going to be different for each, each time you're going to have it, depending on the environment, your age, other factors. So it's totally subjective. Wahi, the, uh, the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa is a very objective criteria. It's a rational, logical criteria. It is free from contradictions. So you mean... To reach reality, there are two sources. One is rational, other one is vahi. Vahi. Now, who's going to? Anybody can come up and say, "Hey, I have a vahi." Correct. How to check that? Rational. So, 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 rational so, so the, the, the way to check that, yes, is will be free. From Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, He says, "If this was not from Allah, you will find much contradiction. You you will find much, uh, you know, problems." That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the challenge to uh, mankind. Produce a single surah. If not single surah, pr produce one single ayah like this. Just imagine a person receiving the wahi 20, in 23 years, writing a book. Today, I, write, I present materials. I f forget what I have done two weeks ago. I can't put them in the same position. If you ask me, you ask me, what I have just so said, and you want to record it 10 minutes later, I am not able to do that. 
you have experienced that. That's why you want to record it the first time, right? If, because you asked me to do it the second time, I don't remember. The, why he, the, that is one of the biggest uh, proof that the wahi is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a production of a human mind. It, the Quran was presented in a, in, 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 a, in a period of 23 years. But look at the positions of the ayah, the surah, the, the, you know, the message is always consistent. The flow not only, is not only Muslims who realize this, even non-Muslims realize this. They can't find this, you know, discrepancy. There's no emotion, emotional state of Rasulullah The environment is not there. If, you know, that, that's what happens with people. In, in spiritual experience, just think about it. You know, one of my friends way long back in university, he told me about it. He went to a, um, a place where a sadhu was, uh, was meditating. And then... Um, he, they realized something. He was been meditating for some years. So they realized something. They smelled something. So they were kind of puzzled. What is this smell? Then they realized that the whole, the area is full of, um, what is it? Um, marijuana plant. So the, it was given, you know, the, 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 the pollens, you know, this, this smell was going around. Can you imagine how you, one will be affected if you're sleeping there 24 hours a day? What is the basis of that subjective experience? And many of these spiritual experiences people talk about, they are under um, influence of, uh, you know, chemicals. The shaman experiences that the, uh, the, the Red Indians have in South America, the shamans, they brew some cocktails, concussions, they drink and then they have this experience. The, the, that's totally subjective. How, how do you know it's free from intoxication, from the influence of chemicals? The wahi is not. That's the, the first challenge that we have. So, coming back to our point, so there are two sources of our, our knowledge. One is either we use the modern criteria of mathematics as the foundation of all empiric, uh, you know, studies of nature and reality and, you know, uh, things around us. Or we use the criteria that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, which is, do you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you believe that, you know, Allah created us? Do you believe that Allah has sent you to this um, earth for a purpose? Do you believe that there's a ghab, there's malaika, there are rasul, there's kitab, there's jannah, there's jahannam? Once you accept that, then you can, you know, build your foundation. So, and to, so today we are examining one of the foundations of mathematics, the foundations of the, the, the foundation of science, and in the foundations of science is mathematics. And in the foundations of mathematics, the primary thing that we look at is proofs. Proofs is one of the pillars. Proofs is one of the pillars. Proofs is one is uh, proofs is one of the pillars of mathematics, if, if not the pillar of mathematics. So we will be examine, we will examine how, how, what, what proofs are. Most people, if you talk to them and they will say, this is proven, means it is done. It is, you know, proof, once you world use proof, that means there is no shadow of doubt. There is no element of uncertainty in this, in that uh, statement. So we, let's look at, and before I begin, I want everyone just to, I have a, a very small request. Everyone keep their thought about mathematics and proof on one side. And after the presentation, I would like to have your views on that. So do, I hope everybody agrees that a mathematical proof once you say a mathematics has proved something, it is certain to be true, a fact. Do we all agree on this? That's, that's our common conception. That's, that's what we, we agree. So I want you to Math keep mathematics this. Mathematics is very solid, strong, clear. 
Exactly. Doubts about it. Exactly. So please. Two plus two is four. So two is five. Okay. And so I. Is provable, testable. So I want you all to keep this in your mind that mathematics is is the mathematical proof is the proof. So we will start with our presentation here about mathematical proof and I'm is going to be there are many examples here so I'll be like going over some examples please do not uh, focus on the exam uh, the technical aspects look at the qualitative you know just try to understand what we are trying to say don't go into the technical aspects of mathematics because that is beyond the scope of this presentation what I'm trying to present here is what is proofs and how do we uh, you know is uh, think about proofs so we will start before I begin I want to start with where is that slide so I will start with why is this slide one how many slides? 20. 20. Mathematical Euclid. Where is this? Euclid, Euclid. Okay. So basically, I will start about some misconceptions about mathematics. So there are about 10 I listed. Uh, some misconceptions I listed here. I would like you to just read them and I'm just going to focus on proofs. I'm not going to focus on all of them. The methodology of mathematics is deduction. Okay, so this is actually, this is implicit when we are, we'll be covering all of them in this presentation, but I will be focusing on certain things. Mathematics provides certain knowledge. Mathematics is cumulative. Mathematics is always correct. Mathematics uh, the structure of mathematics reflects its history. Mathematic proof is unproblematic. There's no pro problems in the proofs of mathematics. Uh, is unchanging. Is mathematics is different from other sciences. Mathematics, uh, if something is false in mathematics, then it is always false. It can never become true. And, you know, and so on. So, before we start, we will start with Euclid, this is how the whole foundations of mathematics started. There was this whole concept that the angles of a triangle, the sum of the angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. And this is referred to as the Euclid's parallel postulate. So this is how it started. We'll come back, I'll come back to it, uh, you know, these things here. This is the one of the oldest manuscripts of Euclid's elements. This book has been in circulation for about how many years? 3,000 years now? So it's longer than any other book. So let's, let me just talk about Euclid a little bit and talk about his book elements. And then, you know, I'll be going back and forth on this uh, topic here. So I can, it's very hard to just go in one, you know, linear fashion here. Euclid is a person of Greek, you know, in, in the Greeks, lived about 300 BC. And he wrote a book. Um, he wrote a few books, among which was The Elements, is a 13 volume book that was written down and about geometry, of all knowledge that was known about mathematics at that time. And there's not, other than that, there's nothing known about him. Who was he? Who, what was his father? Where was he born? You know, all those kinds of things are, they are there in, in, you know, in popular culture, but nothing is definite. So that's basically Euclid. And one more important fact is, Anything that he has written there is not like he was the first one to do it. He just is collecting all of them in one book. And his book is very essential into, uh, in the sense that it has been influential in people's thoughts, not only in mathematics, but as I will show you, in other you know, spheres of human life. So let's look at where it has been influenced uh, here. Three places that I would like to point, pinpoint because of, of our current geographical situation. Uh, Descartes and Newton, one of the few you know, names of Western sciences, they were very much influenced by Euclid. Abraham Lincoln was a fan. In fact, he wrote his uh, uh, Gettysburg speech based on the pattern of Euclid's axioms. The U.S. Declaration of Independence is based on the Euclid's axiomatic system. 
So with this, I will, what I'm trying to say is we are studying this not just because we are studying mathematics. We are studying this because of its influence on other sphere of life. So we want to know why is it that other things, you know, how come its influence is on other life, this, uh, you know, other sphere of life. What is it? So, what is the quality? What is its um, uh, point that we want to know that it has been so influential in world history? In fact, Euclid has been very instrumental in Islam in the Islamic world. People of you know philosophers, uh, people have been very much influenced by his methodology. And what is his methodology? So what's his methodology? I mean, these are the few things here, and this, you know, the Abraham Lincoln connect, connection, this is a whole full quote about it. I'm not going to, you know, go into the, the details so you can, you know, you can get this thing. And in fact, it's so influential that even today, look at, uh, look at what um, uh, Harry Friedman, he's one of the foremost uh, logicians, mathematical logicians available today. Look at what he has, he has done. He has basically, he, his, his way of thinking, you know, people have used his way of methodology to prove the existence of God. So I, I hope we understand why we are trying to study this right now. If a methodology can prove God, how, what, uh, you know, we should all be fans of it, right? We should, um, I mean, embrace it. So, he, here you have two quotes here, and Harvey Friedman, in line with uh, uh, Leibniz and uh, Godel and Newton, has gone on to use logic and the uh, Euclidean methodology, for lack of better words, to prove that God exists. But he used a different logical framework. He says, a concept from classical theory. So what happened was, just give you a small background, all the proofs of God through this methodology, there was always some gap. So Friedman, uh, Friedman is saying, Friedman is saying, Friedman is saying, instead of proving God through mathematics, I am going to prove mathematics through theology. Okay? So that's, that's his line of argument. And here is a quote from a six-year-old person who is, um, who is um, a computer researcher at Microsoft Research uh, in the U.S. He says, his son says, to his friend, Leo, do you have a religion? You know a religion like Jewish or Christians or mathematics? So, uh, what I'm trying to, this is an introduction to what I am trying to say here is, we are not studying this just for because we want to learn mathematics one plus one. This is far beyond that. This is more important than that. That's why we are trying to learn this. And I actually not learn this, understand this. So, the other, uh, these are few quotations from other, uh, you know, people across, um, you know, time where they have uh, said what are the importance of mathematics into, uh, you know, in our life. Uh, you know, they are saying basically that through mathematics and through the geometrical and Euclidean axiomatic system, uh, you can become, uh, you can understand reality, the workings of nature. And in fact, according to Leibniz, uh, Newton, and, uh, and uh, you know, Godel, and now Harvey Friedman, you can even prove God exists. So, so, you can prove God by using mathematics? Yes. This is what they say. That's what they're saying, yes. That's correct. So, so the reason why I'm saying, uh, again, let me reiterate this point, and I think this is always lost. We are not studying this for mathematics. We are studying because people are making the claim that mathematics can prove the existence of God. They can, can show us the road to reality. This is the reason why we are here today. We are not here to study mathematics. We are not doing a master's course in mathematics, uh, you know, history of mathematics or anything else. Uh, look, look at what Ms. Ms. Barrow, Ms. Uh, professor here, um, recently says, if a religion is defined to be a system of ideas that contain unprovable statements, then Godel taught us that mathematics is not only a religion, it is the only religion that can prove itself to be the one. 
Even God cannot make two times two, not, not make four. This is a, if you, look, if you give it to a traditional Islamic scholar, this, you know. <laughs> so this, this is, this, uh, you know, within, you know, this, this has God, you know, Gauss, one of, he's called the prince of mathematics. God does arithmetic. You know, and so on and so forth. I mean, there's many, I don't want to go in, you know, we have, we can, I can so go on. These principles, they blew these principles so big that they started believing that nobody can change these principles. Exactly. That's a very good point. That, that is the point, yes. So, God is a geometer, you know, things keep change. The laws of nature are but the mathematical thoughts of God, Euclid. You know, and Galileo also said, you know, reiterated this position and I'm not going to go into all these details, but one quote I will take from the Wall Street Journal is here. It says, impressed by the beauty and success of Euclidean geometry, this is what Brother Fawad just said. This is, he said it in Urdu, and he, this is in English. Philosophers, most, most notably Immanuel Kant, tried to elevate, elevate his assumptions to the status of metaphysical truth. Geometry that fails to follow Euclid's assumption is, according to Kant, literally inconceivable. The same thing, exact same thing. So, what what is, what is it that Euclid did that is so so powerful and that's so impressive that people are so much mesmerized by this thing? So, I'm not going to go into details of this thing. I'm just going to give you an overview here. Basically, Euclid defined, um, you know, stated. Sorry, Euclid stated 23 definitions, five axioms, and five postulates, and on this basis, he built the whole of geometry. Okay, so whole of geometry is built on 23 definitions, 5 axioms, and 5 postulates. And so, uh, these are the, you know, I'm not, I have not enumerated all of them here. Uh, and the people were so impressed by this that they, you know, they gave all these things, you know, names here. These are the 5 axioms of uh, um, uh, Euclid stated by him in you know in the original form these are all stated I have in the next slide I have tried to translate this into how we will see them in today's uh, time so things are that are equal to the same thing are also equal to one another basically he's saying if x is equal to y and y is equal to z then x is equal to z you know which is called transitive property you know we can be become technical but this is nothing that is not intuitive axioms everybody knows these things if i say i'm you know this up i'm equal to uh, muzammil bai and muzammil bai is equal to fawad bai then that means we are all the same people it, 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 we are not three different people if you know so there's nothing like rocket science is only is just formalizing these things so one question you will ask one question that i, I had when I was studying this well, as a young person, I came across this. Uh, I asked everybody, why are we rephrasing this thing? Why aren't we just using the definition that Euclid provided? Why do we have to say if x is equal to y and y is equal to z? You, know, you understand? We, if I say things are equal to the same thing, are also equal to one another, it's, it's difficult to understand. But if you say if x is equal to y and y is equal to z, then x is equal to z. Why do we have to rephrase this in this way? So the answer that I got at that time is that we get some added value. So my question was not I, we are getting added value. My question was, if what is the purpose of saying those things? And if you are rephrasing these things, do you get your original answer? What the purpose? Why do we have, if you say this is a pen and then you say this is a, Biro, and this is a, you know, X, a meaning the same thing. What is the point? Why do you have to say the same thing in five different ways? The, what does it give you? Do you understand the question? Clarity, to understand that thing. So understand what? The axiom. It's basically, you ask, exactly, to understand something behind it, right? You want to have clarity about something. If I ask Muzammil Bai, what's, what's your name? Mazammil, what's your name? You say, it means this. So I'm trying to understand what Mazammil, the word means. So basically, there's something behind it that we are trying to understand. You, 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 so you mean that axioms is an attempt to understand something which is behind it. Correct. 
That is the point. And that is what Who I... Who says that? Huh? Who says that? Everybody says that. It's implicit. But nobody says that. I was asking the question. That is the answer that I was looking for. I never got it. Because they don't have it. Because nobody wants to say that. What, what they don't answer? say. He means they don't say it, but it's implied. Yes. What is that? Reality. Reality. Clarity. Clarity, as you just said, clarity of reality. I want to be more clear on this point. But in a point you are talking about. Reality. Reality. What kind of reality? Reality. The ultimate reality. Ultimate reality. Yes. Well, what is the relation between axioms and the ultimate oh, reality? I just showed you. Through this axioms, people are trying to prove the existence of God. I just, we went through that. So you're telling me that these axioms is an attempt to answer the question, why? Why we are here? What is the purpose of our life? Correct. And what's going to happen to us? Yes, after we die. This, for these three questions, the answer is God, which people have been answering. Prophets have been claiming. Prophets have been sent. Okay, let's put it this way. Prophets are claiming, mathematicians are claiming that they have this way to reach that. Correct, answer. yes. Okay. That is the reason why it, this is being rephrased all the time. So okay. that people... Yeah. Mathematicians are proving, are trying to reach the reality. They are trying to. Okay. Yeah. You cannot prove. They are that's, that's, let's see if they are able to. Let's look at it. So are we clear on this thing? Yeah. So this caused me a lot of confusion, honestly. Since I was, I started what mathematics. Because I didn't understand the purpose of why we are studying this. Why are we to keep asking the same questions in different ways? But it's, there's another dimension of studying this thing. I agree, I understand. But I'm just telling you, I, it caused a lot of confusion when I was growing up. There, there are basic needs and there is ultimate need. So basic needs is just to get the mathematical mind. But the ultimate need is to get to the reality. Yeah. So, <laughs> get to the reality. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, uh, and nobody was able to express that to me that this is the reason why so we are studying. So, you can say it's a medium just to so reach that, that reality. Other people didn't use it for this ultimate reality. Yeah. Correct. That's yeah. another thing. That's, That's another thing. Muslims generally don't have that concept. Yes. And this is what you are, you are saying. The educational system that we are getting is pointing towards a different direction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, so let's not get sidetracked. I would just share this very important thought. Like Brother Jawad was saying that you should include these things in the discussion. Otherwise, you, you will, I would definitely forget after, after some time. So this caused me a lot of grief with my, with my father because he never understood what I was saying. And <laughs> I was never satisfied with what he was telling me. So it... <laughs> So it caused a lot of grief between me and my father. Nice terminology you're using for grief. Grief is... So... Uh, <laughs> See, there's the benefit of authority. <laughs> you can use it so anyway, so, they, the, so here was the postulates. These are, you know, the earlier was axioms, which are obvious, and postulates from those things that he draw. And this, the parallel postulate is the one that caused much grief to mathematics and mathematicians throughout history because they what they were trying to do was trying to prove the pa parallel postulate based on the other you know uh, postulate and then we then we will go on so basically mathematical proofs i have identified nine cases actually there should be one more here uh, frauds in proofs but you know yeah frauds uh, mathematical frauds uh, i have not included it in this presentation perhaps we can do it some other time uh, this mathematical words. <laughs> so, proof based on identified assumptions, I have categorized, you know, these are how proofs are. Proofs that lead to contradictions, proofs that, that are lengthy, proofs not understood by anyone, proofs getting harder to verify, computer generated proofs too large for humans to check, yes. computable processes can produce arbitrary outputs in non-standard models, let's leave that one alone, insanely long proofs, proofs that were shown to be false. If you see from 1 to 8 we went through last in our last presentation and uh, so I am not going to concentrate on the from 1 to 8 my presentation today is just on 9 number 9 just number 9 but I will briefly go over the slides one at a time just to show you what these are
No, okay, you want to ask question? Yeah, I had the question before. Okay. The question was question was that six year old kid. Six year old kid question mm. about mathematics. Yeah, yeah. So now the question so you are you are trying to say the people think mathematics is a religion. I just said many mathematicians believe that. But but their principle of religion is a definition of just set of ideas. That is correct. That is called religion? That is according to them. That's what is religion, yes. According to which definition? According to their definition. Their is it uh, uh, the general accepted de definition of the people? Or, uh, that's common itself? understood. That's what is commonly people adhere to that a religion is a set of ideas or beliefs that people yeah, have. But this is not belief. This is a set of some fundamentals. E exact fundamental beliefs. Yes. Yes. But there are two different things. The, according to you or your frame of reference, there are two different things. But if that's what the whole thing is. Mathematics, we'll come to that. Mathematics is also belief. You, let's, let's look at it. Let's look at it. So let's look at the first one. The Euclid, we went through Euclid's postulate where we showed that after 2,500 years, this theorem was resting on assumption and curve, you know, curved surfaces will have uh, triangles that add up to more than 180 degrees. Angles in the triangle add up over so to 180 degrees. So from Euclid's time till 1800s, 1880 or something, I can't remember, is 17 something, 16th century, 17th century, uh, people believe, accepted this as a fact. It's only then when they have realized that if you put the triangle on a curved surface, so for 2,500 years, people accepted this theorem as is. So you're trying to say that they are just shoving this same idea down our throats with the generation by generation without giving the whole picture of it? No, now, now in, uh, in, in today's mathematics, uh, teachings of mathematics, they actually point out this. They do? They do. Yeah. They, between the, the, the rise of Euclidean and non-Euclidean geometries. So they do point out. And, but they point out that, that, that this is the magic of mathematics. Now we have a, you know, from a different frame of reference. I am putting in, putting in the fact that if you made a mistake once that lasted 2,500 years, how do you know that another assumption will not be broken in another 2,000 years? 2000. So they say they claim that it's perfect, or they claim it's perfect based on the knowledge as of today. Uh, is is perfect? Or it's perfect. Yes. Okay. So another another. Um, uh, uh, set of theorems that we came across was the banach tarski paradox where it leads to contradiction. A proof leads to contradiction, right? And this is just not one. There are many other... Nice picture. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I put this picture here because people, it's very difficult to visualize. Basically, what you're saying is if you break that sphere, you can make two equal spheres, which you know in reality can never happen. Yes. If mathematics says that, then mathematics is wrong. Reality yes. is not wrong. Double, double than the previous one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so this is another, this is called Gabriel's horn. Oh, yeah, so we, we know this. one, this is another one here that which says that the area of, of, of a surface can be infinite, but the volume will be finite, which is utterly nonsense. Area is... Mm. Which is utterly nonsense. You, what he's saying is the volume of this room is finite, but the, the floor is infinite. Saying that, and what that that's the theorem. That's the that's what's called. That's, this is the surface. So you we know it from experience that this is absolute nonsense. You have a finite volume and a finite area, or if you have an infinite volume, you will have an infinite area. You can't have a contradictory. It, it's not possible. It's so. What what is this? This is a theorem in mathematics. This is a theorem in mathematics. Theorem. <laughs> so, so let's 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 continue. Question is, this is uh, this is a regular theorem or this is this is a regular theorem? Yes, this is a. It's a paradox. Is this a pa paradox? Of course, it's a paradox. Of course. Yeah, because it's it's provable, but they, but it you know it's not possible. So uh, what I'm trying to point uh, so t two points I am going to make here. One, so, uh, we are trying to identify the loopholes. That is correct. Yes, this is one. This is another loophole. 
So I can give you all the loopholes. This is just two I brought out because these are very interesting ones. And because of another reason. Why is it called Gabriel's horn? Oh, yeah. Yes. So the name is the name refers to the tradition identifying the archangel Gabriel as the angel who blows the horn to announce the judgment day, associating the divine or infinite with the finite. So you can see here it is not only that we are studying this just because of mathematics. We are here philosophy, theology, ideology, belief all come together in answering these questions. So it's it's our fault when we see this only as a mathematical statement. Because these are not only math. I'm not saying this is not a mathematical statement. What I'm saying, listen to me very carefully. This is a mathematical statement, but it is not the mathematical statement. It includes other things which are coming into focus when you start examining those things. You see what I'm saying? And I always, always disliked this name Gabriel. They could have put the name of the mathematician who found this. Why Gabriel? To me, it was an insult to Jibreel Okay. Question. The whoever did this theorem could have a, a, a worldview of Christianity at his time. That would, using yeah, that's term. why he used it. Yes. yes. So he, when he proves the theorem, he might be proving some theological perspective. That is why, that is so correct. that's why he said that, that is, yes. ship is yes. matter. Yeah, because he is using this to justify the trumpet that is going to be blown on the day of judgment. So it's the, so we don't know either, but he's trying to do it correct. from his theological point. That is that correct. Time. Yes, yes. And, and uh, yes. maybe his attempt is, uh, his attempt is just to point out the flaws. No, no. no. His attempt is, because, look at it, because he, the name he put it, that tells you that his point of view is theological. That is correct. That's perfect. But now he is trying to prove it to support his theology because he, it's unseen. He doesn't know. So he is just putting... So how many... So you will see... Provable. It cannot be proven. So we don't know. So, you, so from here, you will see how many people have argued on these things. Thomas Hobbes, a philosopher. Is he, is he, how, how old is he? Well, like, uh, I, don't, I don't like to keep... Uh, no, no, it means it's recent. 18th, 18th century. 18th oh, it's century. recent. Yeah. Like two, under, under uh, yeah. So now John this humanity Wallace, has come... Ga Ga Galileo, Galileo was involved in the debate on this. So you see, what I'm trying to say here is, again, I, want, I will be keep saying this thing throughout mm -hmm. this, this thing. Is we, are not, we don't study things just because, you know, uh, you know, I want to drink water, you know. There are, there are foundations behind these things. There are aqidah behind these yes. things. Yeah. There's beliefs behind these things. And what and if you take them lightly, what happens is they affect you without you even knowing about it. Okay. So let's look at uh, uh, another. Uh, just go back to that slide. See the the later ones, they were against the, uh, the theology of Christianity. So when they went against, it's uh, easy for them to ridicule the person who might have... Exactly. Okay. I mean, Jawad Bhai is making some excellent points. I don't understand. Okay. The person I who... I guess I missed the first beginning part. The beginning part is whoever came with this idea, we don't know whoever it is. Excellent. But at that time, he had a theology... What is the idea? Idea of getting this uh, horn of a Gabriel. Right? So he has a, so a worldview name, of Christianity... The, so the name of this no what Javad Bhai is saying is he, no 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 listen logic of this paradox he's saying what he's saying is the person who has who looked at this or you know what constructed constructed this surface in mathematics has a world viewpoint yes what is his world viewpoint he is is a Christian theology he is trying to understand the relationship between volume and area Could be. maybe. But that's what he pointed out. But yeah. the name itself gives it gives it away. Because but once he found it, inner he could have said he could have said or he could have said if that was the thing, then he would say paradox between area and volume. Yeah. But the thing is, the moment he found it on y-axis, x-axis, he's trying to try to understand volume and surface into into two-dimensional space. Y and x-axis. See. Is in three. So, that is three. Where's the third one? 
But you is a flat because it's, it's plain. Is it's, 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 it's a three. volume? Right? It's volume. It's, okay. it's three. It has to be three. Okay, it's, it's three. It's three. So now, in attempt to understand this thing, he end up with this with diagram. But he, uh, the we, diagram gave him an idea. Hey, uh, uh, like for uh, for uh, for Bhai, no one is denying the mathematical nature of this problem. Then his idea came up. Okay, maybe. Oh yeah, we have a horn too. Right? Exactly, that's what he's pointing yeah. out. Because his worldview, based on his worldview, so that he came with. So this idea. let me let me let if me. If he didn't have a worldview, then he will not come with with this name. To, to, to name it. Yes. If it, oh, if, okay. if, okay. if 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 then if if, if, if a Muslim t uh, mathematician had looked at this, he would have emphasized the paradox of yeah. the area and the volume, not on Gabriel's horn. Yeah. So now, what problem he has? Why did he, did he name a Gabriel Horn? He, this is a paradox. He couldn't prove it. Logically, he cannot prove it. But he came up with the idea and he said, okay, then it should be something which is unseen. We yeah. don't know. <laughs> so so then he said, Very good. Very so good. You're following the my trains okay. of thought. So that's why he said, okay, it's unseen. I don't know because he comes from the theological background. Look at his, in, uh, his worldview. So he said, okay, it's unseen. So it has to be there. Because he's believing on something. So what what has to be there? That the, this formula has to be right. Right now, when we are sitting here, we are saying no, it is but, not. But he himself says it's a paradox, right? No, no but he's justifying. He's justifying, he's justifying, so justifying the paradox. You have to resolve the paradox, right? It's not. It's. Is it, it been? Has has it been resolved? No, so it cannot be. It cannot be. It cannot be. <laughs> Unless the only way it can be resolved is if you reject the foundations of mathematics. So. Okay. Or you reject this proof, one of the two. So the guys who rejected it, look at it. That's the beauty of it. These guys, which came last 200, 300 years ago, they are against the Christianity. So they have to put him false. So it was easy for him to ridicule it. The whole religion, whole concept of religion. But of I Christianity. remember these two. The first one I heard about Galileo. Yeah, was these are all are newer. That's why Galileo I said when was he was quite a religious like, person. I so heard we will talk about it later on. Let's let's move on. This just shows. You, uh, understand the main point here. Yeah. The main point is there's an intersection of mathematics, theology, philosophy, yeah. and belief. This is the point I'm trying to put across. Uh, let's not go. Here. We can di discuss this. Mm -hmm. It is not mathematics alone. It is not philosophy alone. It is not ideology alone. It is not belief alone. It is an intersection of all this. When you study this, mm. you, you you get my point. So, there are many other paradoxes in mathematics. We, I think we have gone through those at some time. Uh, we can't go in the, that's a different topic altogether. So, let's go to, uh, we went through a list of mathematical proofs that have been very lengthy. Last, last presentation, I can't go into them again. Uh, these are some proofs that took so many 850 megabytes, 13 megabytes, 200 terabytes of data. We went through that. Uh, we went through performance theorem that was like 500 pages long, very difficult to, for someone to understand. Uh, this it was like it took about what 30 years, 10, you know, how many 15,000 pages, whatever. Uh, this is another Kepler conjecture that took about what three gigabytes of computer calculations, and referee says they were 99% certain of the correctness of yeah, this proof. They, nobody has taken the courage to say it's 100% correct. Nobody will say that. Okay. Um, we have other related problems on that. Uh, next is this took 13 gigabytes in computer size. This took 200 terabytes, about 10 billion years to solve. This, uh, this is uh, some proofs that uh, you know, the Japanese mathematician has come up with which no one understands. It's been going on for five years now, I think four, 12, 12, 17, yeah, five years. Uh, increasingly, these uh, proofs are getting harder, so you just have to accept your professor. I have proved yeah. it, so you just have to accept it. It's uh, everybody is like that. Yeah, so. Today, the whole world is going on this path, so, uh, like this fundamental. You say it, you So what this, does this professor say? I think that we are now in inescapably in an age where the large statements of mathematics are so complex that we may never know for sure whether they are true or false. That puts us in the same boat as other scientists. 25 years later, we are still not sure if it is correct or not. We sort of think it is, but no one's ever written down the complete proof. What, what kind of proofs are you talking about? 
these proofs, the, the proofs on these theorems that we're just talking about. You want me to go on through the proofs of these theorems? What's, there's no point on that. Theorems. Yeah. So that means nowadays uh, it's a it's another technique to become a pseudo, uh, I don't know, philosopher or whatever, to coin something extremely uh, complicated. Yeah. Which is common. Not, common people should which not. Which is understand. not comprehensible yep. by anybody. Yeah. And which implicitly becomes acceptable by anybody. That is correct. Okay, we will just go. Some, we'll some bigger blessing should be on your hand. Then yeah. it's okay. Yeah. So, so let's let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go on. You see. So, so we went through so some proofs. Those. Proof. those so uh, what is theorem? Theorems are statements that are proved by the on the you know through a set of statements on inferences based on your axioms. Mm. There are some postulates, right? Starting points, and on those things there are rules, and on those rules you prove some statements. That's what theorems are. So we went through uh, long proofs that will take you know billions of years, or in fact, I, 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 that's an understatement, I believe. That uh, so I just want to point it out that that here it means it is in piano arithmetic. So if you can invent it, so this is what happens. You you have mathematics. If you want to prove the elements of mathematics, you invent another first order logic. That's what it's called to prove. The theorems here to prove the first order logic, you, prove, you go to second order logic, and from second order logic, you went to third order logic, and that's up to that how far people have gone. That's called mathematics, meta mathematics, meta 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 mathematics, and you know, and so on. So, if this takes long in ordinary mathematics, perhaps in uh, first order logic, it may take less. That's just wanted to show, uh, share that with you. So, there are more you know, statements like that. We are skipping this ones now. The main point of this yeah. presentation: proofs that were shown to be false. Okay. Now, I uh, hold your questions, mm -hmm. and I am going to go through this. Just keep a tally of how many proofs. If you can, you, you know how to put a tally, right? Just keep a count of how many um, theorems that I am going to go through. Please. I I, I forgot. I was writing them, I completely forgot. So just keep going, just keep a running count, and then I will ask you at the end of it. And mind you, I will start with what? I will show, the first one was Euclid. We went through that one. There's a whole school of algebraic geometry, right? There's a whole school, Italian school of algebraic geometry. It was based out of, out of Italy. So it had, a, it had mathematicians who were not Italians too. So Please don't just say Italians. It produced a number of um, theorems in algebraic geometry that were later shown to be false. It's very difficult. There's a whole book written on these things. So I, these are the references. If anyone wants to check it out. Now I'll come to a, a categorization that I did. This is my personal one. Is proofs that were accepted based on the fact that, that the person who is producing that proof was a famous person. Mm. So, uh, put a context here. Let's pause your context here. It's just like saying, Ibn Taymiyyah said this, I accept. Then somebody makes fun of me, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah was wrong. So, put a context here, okay? So, Godel, who is considered to be the mo foremost lo logicians of the 20th century, if not modern times, he made a big boo-boo in one of his proofs that was not settled till 1960. This was done in 1900, uh, 1923 or something, and it was finally shown to be utterly false in 1983. So in 1960, it was found out there was a problem, but it was only in 1983, 23 years later, that was shown that Mr. Godel was mistaken and the satisfiability of formulas in the larger class was not decidable. We got that? Okay, so imagine if a theologian had made this mistake. Mm. Just imagine that. Well, humanity will be great. Huh? <laughs> okay. So it's the same one. I uh, copied this one out. You know, the, it had some nice statements here. 
Uh, so I just kept it for my reference. Euler, this is another mathematician. I, pro, Euler, math, you know, Euler for anybody who has done engineering has come across Euler, right? Euler formula, Euler identity, Euler theorem, complex analysis. Anybody who has done basic engineering has to know who is Euler. He is one of the princes of mathematics. He, there's a classical chess problem, and he said, he, he said it was not possible. He gave no explicit proof. Everybody accepted it. From 1759 to 1877, Everybody accepted it till it was shown that he was false. Classical what? Chess? Yeah, there's a chess problem. What is the chess problem? The chess problem is how, you know, uh, the knight, the gora, if you can move it across the chessboard without repeating the same square. That's called the knight's tours, if I remember correctly. Square so let's, let's not go into Starting from uh, square one? Square one, square one, yeah, from a, one, yeah, A1, yeah. So what you're you supposed to do, you have to... Transfers the whole... Every, every, every square, every touch square it has to touch. without touching without the. Uh, so, uh, uh, what is the problem in it? Then it will never be solved. He, he, he said, it will miss. He, he said, it's let's. He, he said, in, so there are different kind of chess boards. There are four rank, five rank. You know, I don't want to go into details on these things. <laughs> just, just take it from me that he said something that was incorrect. Just and people accepted it because he was Euler. Mm. Okay, let's go on. He was a big Mufti. Yeah, Mufti. Well, <laughs> <laughs> an another, another of Euler's theorem was about uh, vertices. Uh, anybody who has done networking, anybody who has done basic networking will know that V minus E plus F is equal to 2. That's uh, the theorem that was taught. This theorem actually caused me grief also. So, because I never <laughs> understood this theorem. So, when I was taught about this theorem, Basically, it means that on a uh, on a um, uh, an object, the number of vertices minus the number of edges plus number of the faces is equal to two. Uh, Euler proved this theorem. Later on, it was shown to be false. Okay. So now let's look at uh, uh, there was uh, there was another uh, who was. Okay, so there was another uh, complexity thing here that was submitted, uh, but one Newman, who is a very famous uh, person who worked on the Manhattan Project, he proved that it is consistent. Later on, it was shown that the proof itself was not possible. So forget about being wrong. Lebesque, anybody who has done integration, uh, basic integration, uh, Riemannian integral, Lebesque integral, Stigel's in integral, yeah. basic, you know, calculus three, yeah. you will know Lebesque. He made he made a boo boo, you, and you're pushing our minds back to thirty years. Uh, and <laughs> and he made a boo boo, and you know he gave incorrect definitions of measure on the measure theory. Hushi is another person who you cannot miss if you are done mathematics. He gave incorrect proof on the continuity and differentiation of functions. Uh, he was corrected later by other you know mathematicians, Fourier, Dirichlet, and all these things. Legendre is another person, we will come to him, he gave this theorem. He believed that the sum of cubes is not rational, you know, and then a counter example was given. Raman, on whose basis theory of relativity is, you know, uh, works upon, he made uh, a series of boo-boos here. Okay. Langrange, you know, his book, The Celestial Mechanics, is a, you know, a celebrated um, book. I am just giving you the, the boo-boos, the, the names. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I am not going to explain the, no, I cannot. That's, that's mathematics. That's mathematics. Just listen, listen to this, okay? So Langrange is a person who wrote on celestial mechanics, and he was the one who gave this book to Napoleon, and Napoleon teased him or questioned him. He said, uh, uh, where, I do not see the name of the creator mentioned in here, he says, he says, I had no need of, hypo of this hypothesis. Uh, and you know, um, um, uh, La uh, Laplace. Laplace went to Napoleon. Napoleon, presented his celestial mechanics, mm -hmm. and Napoleon asked, in this 13 volume or whatever volume of books you have written, I no see no mention of God. Okay. He said, I had no need of this hypothesis of God. Okay? Amen. And 
this not, uh, 1800 this, this, is, this is napoleon time yeah uh, so he is he is uh, he, he you know these are langraj and laplace they made boobus this frege was the one who did um, who was trying to axiom, uh, you know build mathematics from on the euclidean system from a few axioms you would build the whole of mathematics he made number of boobus here Calais is another one who made Bubu. Poincare, who's, who is, uh, without which a, a theory of relativity is, uh, you know, you cannot do anything. <laughs> That's what you need to understand. That is what you need to understand. I am not listening to you. I am not listening to you. I am not mathematical journals. How is Oh, oh. Hold on, let's go, let's go through that and then I will re revise with you. Don't worry about it. We have uh, Poincaré making mistakes here in uh, you know advanced mathematics. We have uh, a, a, another mathematician making mistakes on Fermat's last theorem. But anyway, his mistake caused a field of mathematics to grow out of there. So that mistake was fruitful. Uh, Kronecker is another one in real analysis. He, he wrote incorrect theorems. Uh, Martin Gardner is a very popularizer of uh, mathematics. He's written a lot of books. I've read. I was very much influenced by his writings. He he made this statement that you know tiling on a plane is complete, and then a uh, a housewife with no mathematical training came and discovered several more cl classes of pentagons wow. and that could tile. And then later on, more discoveries were done. That means intellect is bit greater than mathematical theory. Exactly. Yeah, so, another general question. Anybody who is trying to prove something will do something wrong as well. So, it's my, like, if they did some wrong and some right. So, we are not saying, we are not saying that they did right or wrong. They, of course, they did right. That's why they are called mathematicians. So, the point is, the, uh, we, will come, we will come to that point. So. There's another theorem called the four color theorem. Here I can explain to you okay. what a yeah, four color. Like the, the point four is, you know, we are taking mathematics as religion. Yeah, uh, that's so, okay. Excuse me. Yeah, mathematics, yeah, but you know, I'm going to ask you. Uh, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We are going through proofs. We are not, we are not criticizing mathematics. We are criticizing. Exactly. We are the title is proves that are shown to, to be, be false. false. Yeah. Okay. That is all that I'm showing. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. let's let's yeah. keep going. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. We are not coming. We are, we are we are hold on hold on. We are not come. We have not come to the point. I mean, there were proofs at one time. After some time, they are they were proven so, false. Mathematics. Uh, people believe mathematics. It has nothing to do with this whole Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. I will answer this. Four color theorem is basically trying to color a map in which no adjacent areas are of the same color, right? Mm. So this is the map. I, I put two maps here so that people can understand. This, this was actually proved that this is so by Campbell in did I put the uh, eighteen something? What but, four color has to do? Okay, this is a map. Okay. This is the map of United. Let's make take a simple one. Okay. United States. Okay. You want to color. You want to have a minimum number of colors to use this, so that no adjacent area is the same color, right? Three. So what is the minimum number required? They say four. it's four. Prove it. Okay. So the first proof was given by Mr. Campbell, uh, and for dozens of years, I think I think twenty years. It was accepted. Then later on, it was found that it is wrong. Because the counterexample was found. That surface. It minimum is five. So anyway, we'll we'll come. It, the counterexample was not found in the final example. It was in in his steps. In the steps, it, he was using the wrong. Um, assumptions. assumptions. So, uh, if you want me to go into that, that's a separate thing altogether. Let's let's go okay. through this. Let's go through. It. This is another d problem in um, in differential geometry. Listen to this. Uh, listen to this carefully, and then we'll come to the point. Okay. 
he proved it that, that this problem had a solution in 1960 1968 it was discovered that this was has a problem as a error in 84 a complete solution was provided so a gap of how many years 24 years a continuum hypothesis that's another problem that was you know many 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 famous mathematicians tried to prove later on it was shown that it cannot be decided forget about proving it can't be decided one way or the other true or false uh, oh, this is a repeat this is another a technical theorem here that was proved in 1848. Then it was corrected later on in 1864, 24, 20 years later that this is not correct. You have this, this is a very interesting problem. This is, this is a theorem which, you know, this is the statement. I don't want to explain the statement here. But what happened was, this is what happened to this. First of all, this guy, Zhang proved that this theorem is correct. When an error was found in this, in this proof, he proved that it is false. So he proved, <laughs> first he himself proved. <laughs> he, he first proved that it is correct. And then later on prove that it is not correct. So this is, the, look, at the, look, at, look at the comments of the mathematics uh, professors mathematically this is a, they don't know about this this is an amazing story this one said eh? he said I find no reference to the other paper uh, then the, the you know people forced you know with, with this kind of thing then it was forced that he, the paper write out that this was this is what happened so he is uh, the examples that I've studied so far he's the only mathematician in history to prove P and not P at the same time in the same journal. What P and non P? P means a, prove. prove a proposition and then prove the negation of that proposition. That's what in mathematics is called. P means a statement. In, in modern science, this is what it is. So it, if you get evidence against you, accept it. He brought the evidence against himself. So, 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 you, so, so but so that, but but you like we started with mathematics is not science. Mathematics is deductive. Mathematics is supposed to be deductive. It can it you can't ju just be flip flopping in mathematics. Then you then what are you talking about then? It's a theorem, it? So theorem is theorem is is mathematics. That's what it is. The theorem is not experiment. Is not observation. Theorem is not an experiment that you don't know the edge, you know, what is in Antarctica today, tomorrow you know it, and then you have to change your, your viewpoint. Okay? So next, you have the Jacobian co conjecture, same problem, it was proven, then it was later again disproven. You have, uh, you know, these are some technical, uh, you know, these are advanced mathematics. So I can't just, like Brother Fawad is saying, I give you a detailed example on this thing. This will itself require two hours of explanation. You have same thing here, 61. It was proved as a theorem. It was used by people. Okay. Then it was found out that, oh, it was wrong. So this has a special problem because using this theorem, other theorems were proven. <laughs> So this is the point of the, the so just oh. so okay let's go through same thing with Hilbert's problem it was proved solved a problem later it was discovered no it is wrong same problem with 16th problem same thing you have you know these are technical names here same problem you have uh, 1803 it, this theorem was proved in 1967. It was shown as incorrect. So, did, how many years have passed? 120 years? 100 and something years, right? Okay. Same thing, 1966. Here it was given this thing, and what happened? Uh, in 2000, 1996, uh, I 2005 or something, it was said that. Uh, Sorry? Leaves in mathematics. So, uh, 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 u
प्रैक्टिशंस आप क्या बात कर रहे हैं आपको फॉलो नहीं कर रहे हैं आप ओके लेट्स पॉज हियर नहीं अभी आप गिनती कर दे आगे चले ओके 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 दिस इज माय फेवरेट क्लीफर्ड अलजेब्रास क्लीफर्ड अलजेब्रास लिसन 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 टू दिस वन ओके लिसन क्लीफर्ड अलजेब्रास दिस इज वन ऑफ द अलजेब्रा दैट पेनरोज यूजेस इन हिज बुक ऑफ थ्योरी ऑफ रिलेटिविटी काउंटर example accepted theorems in clifford algebra were rejected right. clifford algebra is one of the algebras that penrose uses in his book theory of relativity i showed um, uh, road to reality yeah one of the theorems here is ex- not he one a series of counter examples of theorems have been discovered in clifford algebras the one that he is using to prove reality I brought that book, right? Everybody saw that book. So you see how that fit. I actually, <laughs> I went back to study the book after studying these things. The main basis on which he develops his theories is Clifford algebras, and I am telling you that many of the theorems on Clifford algebras have proven false by their own method. Okay. So I, next, this is Torsion function. To, 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 uh, to, uh, to Carmichael's function, same problem. 1922, it was proven to be wrong. Rokon's Ronskian determinant. This is again anybody who has done linear algebra, anyone basic engineering knows what this is. Okay, a series of theorems on that one has proven to be false. You have this theorem that is was. Uh, an incorrect proof was published in 64 found out to be incorrect in 83 okay a uh, verma model the same thing pi to 7 this is a minor one but you know somebody calculated pi to 707 you know how many digits but there was an error found in some you know place thing but if you want to be pre- mathematics is needs to be precise so that's why i brought this example here Here is another series of papers written by this mathematician who has pointed many many errors in uh, geometry, uh, especially differential geometry. I think is manifold. I don't know. Remember what area of mathematics this is? So this is one, two, and three. This is uh, in knot theory. He proved uh, again there was a uh, you know problem, and this is a fundamental the- uh, theorem in knot theory that was uh, shown to be incorrect. Knot theory. Uh, this is another example. Example of knot. You know, th- you, you understand what knots are. You know, knots. Mathematicians have been studying knots to try to understand. Uh, you know, <laughs> things. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> this. <laughs> so exactly, guitar <laughs> kaise lagi? So, so this is what happens here. <laughs> this is not. <laughs> so again, <laughs> for <laughs> so. So basically, <laughs> just think about it. Here, many mathematicians missed this point, and there was that Neumann algebras. We we already showed you that this is wrong. Amicable numbers. I am not going to go into that. This was shown shown to be wrong. Differential manifolds. They again uh, 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 mistaken theorems. These are another series of theorems that were thought to be true, but pay attention to this one. they were thought to be true but they were found out to be false after x was found to be 1.5 times 10 raised to power 316 right. that is when it was shown to be false okay another one the same thing this is the same one on the here 10 ke upar 10 chada hua uske upar god hai ha so polias conjecture is another one another one so this is where you see this it fails at what 9 million or what 9 billion 906 billion trillion whatever a very large number so if you do it for 1 2 3 4 5 6 100 200 1 million it is correct but when you do it at at this values it is incorrect okay 
This is another one of the same example. This one was found to be what? 10 raised to power 1.3 times. Exactly. This is another example here. <laughs> this is another, another one. Are you keeping count of it? This is going to be Okay. So this is another one. Telescope can conjecture. So, okay, so here, I mean, I, 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 here is, I, I'm going to stop here a little bit, try to, because, <laughs> so basically, here, from here, this is the main topic that's coming up. The main, the main point of here, we are just showed you, the, this is, how many, how many, these are 45 prime examples from the highest peaks of mathematics where theorems were proved to be correct. <laughs> the, the theorems that were proven to be co correct were later on shown to be false. Now my question, now question, question, question. question. Now I want to ask you a question now. You had a view of mathematics before you started hearing this presentation. Do you think now that proofs are, if you say something has been proved, will you take that statement as where you were taking before? And so what else is in mathematics? What else is mathematics? Algebra, no. Algebra, algebra. 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 Algebra,